Um, so first thing to say is if you haven't already created a Wikidata account, now would be the opportune time to uh, go to Wikidata and go to the top right link where it says create account. If you already have a Wikipedia account, you can log in with those same details. So if you have a log on for Wikipedia, you can use that log on to go on to Wikidata. If you don't have one, all it requires is a username and a password, and there's no obligation to pay money or carry on editing if you don't want to. So. We'll be doing a bit of live editing just to show the power of Wikidata. So it, it would be uh, really useful if you did have that Wikidata account set up. Um, just also to mention that if uh, you are wanting more Wikidata, there is the advanced query workshop later on this afternoon at 2.15. Uh, I'm very pleased that Nav Evans from Histropedia, who's wandering around just now, if you want to give people a wave, is going to help me do the presentation today. Uh, with, and Sean from Histropedia is here as well. And we've got Chris Williams. You can ask him questions. He's an enthusiastic Wikidata volunteer to come down from Inverness to sort of help out for today. And we've got Richard as well from Wikimedia UK. So. And there's me. Uh, my name's Ewan, uh, I work as the Wikimedian in Residence at the University of Edinburgh. I'm really pleased that we could do a showcase event on Wikidata, it's our newest project. It's also quite exciting about the possibilities uh, that we can achieve with Wikidata. So, welcome. Okay, so Wikidata, is the free and open knowledge base. And to put it in context, Google had its own free and open knowledge base, free base, um, which is, as it says, an open Creative Commons licensed graph database with more than 23 million entities. Well, I should say was an open Creative Commons licensed graph database with more than 23 million entities because Google decided to wind it down and migrate all the data from Freebase into Wikidata. Uh, Wikidata was obviously doing... Yeah, it was starting to grow. I think they just really seemed to realise the community was growing faster and it was a better, better place to be. So we've decided to help transfer the data in Freebase to Wikidata and that happened in mid-2015. Uh, the information that's on Google's knowledge panels, if you typed in what date did the First World War start, it would come up with a suggestion um, of the date and also suggest uh, a Wikipedia article and flags of the combatants as well. The, this is all not exclusively but increasingly powered by Wikidata. And that sort of shows the sort of prevalence of Wikidata and the power of Wikidata given the market dominance of Google as a global crawler search engine. Problem that we have with uh, Google's knowledge graph is that it's not terribly knowledgeable. Uh, Washington Post in May met, brought this up when they said Google provide information but they often leave out the context on where that information came from. So for that, that first panel, July 28th, 1914. There's, n there's nothing there. Uh, it's probably taken from Wikidata, but it would be nice if it was acknowledged so we could double check. There is a link on the right-hand side to Wikipedia, but there has been a suggestion that Google want to be more authoritative, and that's why they don't have that sort of link sourcing where they're coming from, which isn't very helpful. So there is the need to provide digital provenance in an age of information explosion. And since Google frequently does not cite its sources, there's no way for users to double check answers for bias or error, which doubtlessly exist. So in terms of digital provenance, Wikidata is 
well placed to be that central hub. It's already providing a central hub for the, all of the Wikipedia project. In this way, it's been described recently as the new Rosetta Stone, which is quite a nice description. And that's, there's a cracking article by Alex Hinojo. I don't know how you say that. He's from Barcelona. Uh, but uh, the, the link's at the end of the slides. It's a really great article. But what do we mean by Wikidata as the new Rosetta Stone? What is Wikidata? Well, it's a free link database of knowledge that can be read and edited by both humans and machines alike. And in that way, it's completely different from Wikipedia. Machines can't read, computers can't read Wikipedia. The fact that Wikidata can do this already makes Wikidata so much more powerful than Wikipedia. It acts as a central storage for the structured data of all Wikipedia's sister projects as well. So Wikipedia, Wikivoyage, Wikisource, Commons. Wikicommons, of course, as well. All of that structured data can be held in one place and used um, in any way you see fit. It's all public domain. So what is Wikidata actually? It's a repository of the world's knowledge, a database that anyone can read and edit, multilingual, designed to deal with the reality Wikipedia has to deal with. By that, we mean that the uh, world can be obviously quite confusing and you could have like three sources providing three different dates of birth for the same person. But, so Wikidata can cope with that eventuality. Uh, it's free and open so source software and all data on Wikidata is CC0 licensed, means there's no restriction on its use. So in terms of it being the new Rosetta Stone, if we think about English Wikipedia being the most populated of Wikipedias at 5 million articles plus, when you think about it, it only includes about 30% of the items entered in the other 287 to 300 languages, which is not really great. And it sort of shows that English Wikipedia is sort of biased in a way towards the Western world. So if we had a central repository that could harness all 300 <coughs> or 287, however many languages Wikipedias we have now, then that would truly be a powerful tool. So harnessing 40 million articles rather than 5 million and all the data in those articles. So the promise of linked open data seems to have finally arrived. So it's also a powerful machine readable dictionary where we could translate, uh, enable tr automatic translation through Wikidata so that if you have uh, information in English Wikipedia, and updated it, it would then update Chinese Wikipedia, in essence. Effectively, yeah. I mean, it's basically that the data is completely devoid of having one language, and whatever data you've added, anyone in any language at all can make use of it immediately. It's completely different to Wikipedia, where you make an edit in English Wikipedia, and that's it, the end of the line. Other people have to translate it. So it's in inherently not biased towards English or any other language to me. So and, and, and you can do the poor translations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so if we think about uh, how that data is stored on Wikidata, this is an example. Everything on Wikidata is given a unique identifier, and for the writer Douglas Adams, his unique identifier is Q42, which is quite apt, I suppose, <laughs> in some ways. So it's a unique identifier. We also have a description, he's an English writer and humorist, alias is it, he's known as, but within that item of data, we have statements. And every statement has a property and a value for that property. So you can have date of birth and the value for that property would be, well, we can look it up in a moment, uh, but we have spouse here. So property spouse, the value for that property is Jane Belson. And we can also add qualifiers to those properties as well, giving extra information 
about those properties, like dates. Um, we can also add references. Where did we get this information from? What, what's the source of this information? So we can add more references. It's, so for example, if we did have three different dates of birth for someone, we could add three different sources into Wikisource in, under that same property statement. Um, so that's the basic structure of a Wikidata item. It might help us if we look at a live example. If we just click on this. So this is Douglas Adams' page on Wikidata. And so we have his unique identifier, 242. And this is everything on Wikidata is an item. So an item can be a person, a place, uh, a scientific theory, you name it. But it's structured in lots of different statements and we have properties on the one hand and values for those properties all the way down. And we can see all the different language Wikipedias that Douglas Adams has a reference in. So updating Douglas Adams' Wikidata item will update all these different well, Wikipedias. It, as and when they're using it more, like some are using it already to some extent, but basically, um, certainly, basically the reality is that in, in a some small number of years, one fact will change and, you know, when someone's referenced that date of birth in all the info boxes in Chinese and, you know, in Arabic and Wikipedia, change that value and all the Wikipedia articles could update all the time. It's already possible for this just a matter of adoption in Wikipedia and it happens, it's already happened. This, this first statement, instance of, is a really powerful statement and really useful. It tells us, obviously, that Douglas Adams was a human, which is obviously very helpful to know. Um, when we're trying to sort of use queries I involving that. Because you've got seven references for that. Oh, no, no, that's just my article, two references, but still, I mean, I think they can take their word for the fact that you can use it. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> uh, we can also go down to place of birth and click on Cambridge, go into that, and th we'll see that this is also an item with a Q code. So items link to other items. And in this way, we have linked data. So, if I go back here. And in terms of linked data, we can visualize this linked data in terms of the different statement types that we have. So the, I don't know if the colors are coming across very well here, but uh, the, up at the top left, there are some yellow births, and this is linked data related to location in terms of is in, uh, I think it's that is in one. It's like, yeah, so it's the city being linked to, say, the state that it's in, or the state being linked to the country, or whatever. Actually, not that way. Defines yeah. the location. Yeah, it shows the network, and that kind of creates the burst effect. It's quite old, this as well. This is from 2014, I think, which is why this is the latest link to it. But it shows the sort of power and reach of like how you have the green links linking twin city information there as well. So if we think about items, there is an item for David Bowie as, as well as Douglas Adams. So his unique identifier is Q5383. And there's a statement related to his date of birth. So property date of birth, P569. The value for that is 8th of January, 1947. So an item has a property and a value for that property. Sweden, uh, Q34, has a property population, P1082, and the value for that property is 9,747,355. But we also have references and qualifiers. Um, additional information about where we've got that information from, what point in time that information was provided as well. And Wikidata can hold all of that, all of that information. And so if, the, if there's any changes in information, like a government change, you have one central point of reference that you need to change and it can feed that information to any number of different sources. Uh, Eiffel Tower, again, the item is Q243, but it's got a property 
of P625 coordinate location, and that those are the coordinates input for the Eiffel Tower. So there's any number of different information that you could input into Wikidata. Uh, there are many different data types, as we've already seen, times, globe coordinates, items, but there's many other ones as well, strings, commons, media, property, mathematical expression, quantities. I don't know if there's anything you want yeah, to say I mean, that one. Yeah, I think so anyone familiar with databases and stuff, they all know data storage, you need these to describe the world in different ways. Um, and basically, yeah, I mean, the item, the first one is really one of the most important that he's demonstrated already, as in his Dutch talent paper, but uh, in Cambridge. So, you know, that's showing that one item leads to another, leads to another, and creates this entire network of how the whole of Wikidata is connected. But all the other ones are equally important, and you cannot really describe the world without all of them, really. Yeah. And we could show the r rapid growth of Wikidata in the three or four years that it has um, been around. It's, it, we have now roughly around 100 million statements uh, 20 million of which are referenced to outside sources. Uh, looks roughly around about the same reference to Wikipedia, but you can see the r rapid growth of Wikidata right there and what a powerful tool at harnessing all that information in about 300 Wikipedias and using outside sources as well. And it's all public domain. So if we think about the growth of Wikidata as lighting up the world with data, the joy of data, then from 2014, we go to this in 2015, and to this in 2016. And I was going to say with that, because every single dot is just one thing that it knows it's there, you know, it's got a coordinate location, so it's very geographical. Uh, but you can see how Africa, and basically it started off with the USA and Europe, basically, and it's kind of growing out. So what does all this linked data mean? It means that we can now query Wikipedia as never before. We can ask Wikipedia questions, uh, like show me all the architects with UK citizenship grouped by place of education. Because we can, t we can have uh, a property for occupation, occupation architect. We can have country of citizenship, UK and place of education, University of Edinburgh. And we can bring up all this information in tables, lists, you name it. And it might be useful if I just clicked on this, just to show you how that list would look. Oh, it may not work unless you're in there. Oh, let me see, exit. Flip. So there's a list related to all the architects that Wikidata found. Images, dates of birth, gender, commons category, etc. And that's a dynamically generated list, isn't it? That's yep. Yeah. So Uh, the Wikidata game also gamifies the experience of adding an item to improve Wikidata a little at a time. So you could be standing at the bus and just add a little bit of data while you think of it. Um, so that's a nice way of like, gamifying the whole experience. There's Inventaire, builds on Wikidata and that invites people to share their books um, or sell their books. And that uses Wikidata items about authors, books, ISBNs, you name it, anything you've got information about books and authors on. Uh, the BFI of migra our migrating data to Wikidata, the Museum of Modern Art, TED Talks, and Finnish broadcaster, I don't know how you say it, YLE. It's just yeah, sure. <laughs> they're all migrating their data to mu Wikidata, as are Music Brains, and you can use Wikidata to improve medical content, International identifiers like VIA, V-I-A-F, are moving their data to Wikidata as well. And there are interesting projects like Wikiproject, some of all paintings, 
uh, where the intent is to create a wiki project and get an item of data or lots of statements of data for every notable painting, which is a really powerful um, sort of project. If we think about putting data in about uh, paintings like the Mona Lisa, about who painted it, I think we know, but it doesn't hurt to have data about these paintings so that we can use in a public uh, way. But we can also have a one-stop shop for all these identifiers as well. So we can have the VF ID there, BNF ID. And so if these ideas are all in the one place, it makes life so much easier to sort of use the data and update the data. And also query the data. We can bring up lists as we saw earlier. We can bring up lists of paintings by certain um, artists. We, and we can ask Wikidata to provide an image, a title for the image, the date, it, the collection it came from, the inventory number, and the Wikidata number. We can ask it anything and it can sort of as long as it's got the information to begin with, then it can return that information to us in any number of different visualizations. And this kind of shows what the National Library of Wales are, are up to. They, they've got a world first in that they've got a Wikidata visiting scholar working on the Welsh landscape collection, taking metadata for 3,000 images uh, to create detailed linked data. And this is all the kind of data that you can take from an image uh, in, an, uh, in a collection. Publisher, work location, the place it depicts. So there's any number of items of data that can be used and reused time and time again to help showcase the, the work that they've got there. And they can add it to websites like Krotos. And they can visualize it in map form in terms of where the, the image was located or depicting. Uh, you could visualize it any number of different ways. So lots of different projects, lots of migration, lots of possibilities. And at this point, I'll pass on to Nav, who will get you sort of editing Wikidata. Yeah. Thank you very much.